Finding affordable health care is one of the biggest financial burdens so many families face. And by the way, it leads so many people into personal bankruptcy. That's right. Uh, President Obama promised to change our medical system on the campaign trail. So what is his administration going to do for your health insurance and your health expenditures in the years to come? Okay, so it's time now for family money. Andrew Rubin is the vice president of clinical affairs at NYU's Langone Medical Center and host of Healthcare Connect on Dr. Reed. So you get a lot of calls. You hear from a lot of people, hear from a lot of people. Uh, who are confused about the medical system today and how it is and what's going to happen. So let's start with the latter. In all of this talk about stimulus, I would have imagined the amount of money we've spent on the economic system so far uh, on this financial crisis could have solved our health care problems. But what's going to happen to <laughs> our health care? That's a very good point. What's, our, what's happening to our health care system? There's a lot of interesting proposals out on the table right now. The question is what gets implemented. Health care is very complex, lots of, lots of solutions, lots of problems. And it's all solved by money. And the question is how much money is going to really be available to solve some of these problems. I think you're going to see some, some quick changes, though. There have been a lot of uh, local experiments, local Massachusetts, for example. They implemented some form of universal health care. It's been viewed by the citizens of Massachusetts, uh, of Massachusetts as wildly successful. They've dropped their uninsured numbers down. On the flip side, there are shortages of doctors. The state budget for health care has gone way up. But I think you're going to see some national uh, platform which really re you know, resembles the Massachusetts plan. And so the Obama administration pushes this through and uses this as part of its stimulus or part of its effort to, to patch up the economy, saying if we can modernize tech uh, medical technology, if we can get costs down and we can get people insured and covered, um, then we can help the economy. Absolutely. Well, there, there's two components to that. There's a, there's a short-term fix and there's a, and there's a little bit of a longer-term fix. The short-term fix is people are losing their jobs. And the way you stimulate the economy and keep people with health care is you increase the funding to the states mm -hmm. to provide Medicaid coverage and mm -hmm. that's the sort of the state quasi state federal programs that take care of the, uh, the, the lower income people that will have a direct impact it can be done fairly quickly and it'll put money into the economy it'll keep the hospitals you know keep the hospitals running keep the doctors you know keep the doctors busy the longer term really the longer term really requires more uh, a broader solution which is making sure all the uninsured Americans about 40 50 million people not we don't have an exact number have insurance. So you got to create some mechanism, some form of a national insurance plan, whether it be private, public, a combination of the two, where you're tapping into all these people who don't have insurance to create a larger pool of people that pay premiums so that the insurers then offer more uh, coverage to a broader base of people, including the people who are currently uninsurable, people with pre-existing okay. conditions, people who are afraid to switch to a different health care plan because they're afraid their condition may not be covered. Let's talk a little about uh, one of the specific uh, comments, uh, one of the specific proposals in the stimulus package, the recovery package, and that is the automation of medical records. That doesn't seem to resonate with people, but in fact, it's a very, very important task. A lot of hospitals have undergone this in the last several years. I love this subject. It's, it's a I really big deal. I love this subject. I mean, it's fascinating that, that, that records are not automated and a, a doctor can't necessarily see what's going on in the pharmacy and they can't see what's going on in radiology. There's a lot of room to save money with the automation of Saving medical records. Saving a lot of money, actually, yep. and pre preventing errors that are preventable. Yeah, completely, completely preventable and I mean there's a lot of really really great stuff that's been done on this but for some reason it just hasn't taken well, hold you know it's it's like everything else in healthcare nothing's easy so to save money and improve quality you have to invest a right. lot of money without getting into specifics if, an, if a, a, an urban medical center wants to invest in an electronic medical record you could be talking and these are the largest centers 100 180 million dollars right. to do this sure right. Most of these medical centers are either losing money or barely getting by. Where are they going to find so that a good kind of money? Term saving, but the point is there's a good long-term the saving. The Obama administration's talking a lot about auto uh, automating uh, electronic medical records. They're talking a lot about improving clinical outcomes to save money. But to do that, you're going to have to invest money yeah. in the in the system. But that also is a stimulus. It, it's, it's not a matter of scanning records. It's it's no, setting no, down no, every hospital everything. room it's up so that they're on Ethernet and, it, and everybody's By connected and got handheld units and things I'm like that. I'm working on this right now at, at NYU Medical Center, and it's a massive, massive project. Let me it's ask you quickly. Take years. You've lost your job. You've lost your health care with your job. Quickly, what do you do? Well, you, well, the first thing you want to do, and I tell you, say this all the time on my radio show, I tell any friend who's lost their job, if you can, and it, I don't want to sound flip, hold on to your insurance. Although it's a lot easier to say that than do that. Sure. So there are a couple things you can do. One is you have COBRA, but only 9% of people on average can afford COBRA. It's You're out of job. Yeah. It's expensive. It's four to six times more than you pay. For. It's the same insurance, but it's four to six right. times oh. more because your employer's not paying that right. premium right. for you anymore. So it's expensive. So some of this, you, if you can maintain COBRA, COBRA, maintain it. If you want to just insure yourself, you may you know, want to drop your whole family off if, 
again, hard choices. You can look at uh, Medicaid programs, or if you're, if you're currently healthy and you're not worried about pre-existing conditions, you can go out into the marketplace, buy a high deductible plan, just to have some form of catastrophic coverage to make sure that you're protected. Great. But don't give it up if you can avoid it. Andrew, pleasure to talk to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Andrew Rubin is the Vice President of Clinical Affairs at NYU Langone Medical Center and the host of Sirius XM Doctor Radio. All right, we're going to take a look at where you stand right now. What does